So you've realized that you're trading your time for money and you're tired of serving one-to-one -one clients and you're ready to create an impact serving one-to-many. Stick around because in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to outline your next group program. Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am your host, Jennifer Marilla. This YouTube channel is for entrepreneurs, coaches, and service providers who are looking to grow their online business. In this video, I'm gonna teach you guys how to create an online group program. Now, before I dive in, this video is actually brought to you by one of my mini trainings. It's a free mini training, so check it out. It's in the description below where you're gonna get access to a workbook and me teaching you an even more in-depth strategy on how to build out your online group coaching program. So you can go ahead and download that below. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you're excited to learn how to outline this group program. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're interested in learning more on how to grow your online business. Let's dive in, shall we? So let's talk about step one. At this point in your business, you probably have a lot of one-on-one -on -one clients, or maybe you're like, Jen, I don't have any clients. Like, how do I do this? So let's talk about two different strategies for two different options, right? So let's say you have a lot of one-on-one -on -one clients and you're ready to start switching to one-to-many clients. What I would do if I were you, I would start paying attention to the biggest common denominator as to their biggest problem. So all of your one-on-one -on -one clients come to you for one specific reason. What is it, right? What is it that you are helping them achieve? That's the first thing. And if you feel like you still don't know the answer to that, touch points with them, get on calls, offer coffee dates, start asking questions in the DMs to people and ask them how do they see you in the industry and where you can come in to most help them or how they think you can actually help them. Now, scenario two, let's say you're someone who has never created anything. You're like, I wanna start this online business. I'm not really sure where to take it, but I know I wanna do coaching or consulting. Easy. Let's start with your friends and family and let's ask them how they see you and where do they see most value from you? Now, if you have a small audience on social media, I would still reach out to them and ask for DMs. I would get on 20 minute coffee dates and I would simply start to research how people are beginning to see you and what is the biggest common problem that you can solve. Like the people that are following you, what is the biggest common denominator, the biggest problem that they have that you know you can solve. Okay, so there you have, you have two different scenarios. Remember that the first part of this entire process, especially the first part, is getting crystal clear on who you are serving. That is the number one question you need to be able to answer. Answer the who. You cannot serve everyone, and I've learned that the hard way. You need to solve one person's problem and one specific type of person, all right? So this leads us to number two. How do you serve them? So how do you create the product that is going to be able to get the person who's at point A to point B? Essentially, that interim from how do they get from point A to point B, those steps, that is the transformation is that is the creation of the product. That simple, I know, right? Except that we start to think that we need to serve all these people, which is why step one is so important. And if you can't get super clear on who you're serving, then what I want you to do is drop me in the comments below what you're struggling with so I can go ahead and help you. In order for you to get clarity in step two, you need to make sure that step one is completed. So getting crystal clear on who you're serving so that you know how you can serve them, right? So for example, if you know that the majority of your clients are struggling with creating social media content, then you know that you can create a solution for that. How do you do that? You can do a course, you could do a group program, you can start an agency, whatever feels good to you and whatever your clients are asking of you, right? Give them what they want. <laughs> Give the people what they want, guys. It's as easy as that. These are the four types of content you're going to need in order to convert your followers into clients. The first piece of content, and you wanna grab pen and paper for this, the first piece of content is going to be value. This means you're building authority. At least 70% of your content should be based around you building authority and providing value for your ideal client, okay? The second piece of content is going to be storytelling and emotion. I want you to tell the people your story, meet your audience where they're at, and share the dreams and the outcomes that you've accomplished through the methods and systems and steps that you've used to get people these results, right? Remember I said to you in step two that your job is to get person A to point B, and that interim, that transformation in the middle, is essentially the product or the program you're creating? Well. 
I want you to share that interim. What were those steps that you utilized? How did you become this amazing person? How did you achieve the transformation that you want? Okay, so that's in the second and that should be about 20% of your content. Number three piece of content is going to be objection. When I'm talking about objections, I'm talking about like myth busters. I'm talking about mindset blocks. I'm talking about things that people have come to you with when they're, when you've asked for a sale and they've come to you with some type of objections, right? And so that's gonna be about 5% of your content. And last but not least, and definitely the most important content you're gonna to wanna to use is going to be client experiences. So this is the type of content that should be 5%. This is the type of content that includes case studies, testimonials, social proof, basically showing your ideal client, hey, listen, this is the program, this is the course, and look at the results that I've gotten other people I've not only gotten results for myself kind of thing, right? And if you're someone who's never had results for other people because you've never launched this product, then I want you to get some beta tests, you guys, because that's super important. If you have any questions about beta launching, I want you to drop that below so I can create a video on that. Okay, so there you have it. Those are your four pillars of content. And to run through it one more time, you're talking about value, that's number one, and that should be 70% of your content. Then you're talking about storytelling and emotion, meeting your audience where they're at, and painting the desire. And that's about 20% of your content. Objection and client experiences are going to be 5% each of them, right? Objections are any mindset blocks, any shifts that you know you can meet up your clients with. And fourth being client experiences are testimonials and social proof that you have created the results that you say you are going to achieve for them. To wrap it up all clearly, you guys have to make sure that you can answer who you're serving, how you're serving, then go ahead and use my four pillars of launch content and you should be set to go. If you want more in-depth details in this, go ahead and click in the description below so you can grab my mini training and I dive deeper into each of these processes. But until next time, you guys, I hope this was great. Give me a thumbs up and I hope to see you around soon. Go ahead and comment below if you guys have any questions and I'll see you soon. Bye.